Five million later, the central United States becomes a cold, sandy and rocky desert. The North American continent is covered by an ice sheet that ends just south of the border between what were once the United States and Canada, to where the human city of Chicago once stood. The central region of North America is cold and dry. The atmospheric temperature is so low that the air has little capacity for holding moisture. What was once the most productive agricultural land on the planet is now little more than a vast, barren dust bowl. Along the eastern edge of the continent, the Atlantic Ocean has receded, leaving a broad coastal plain coastal plain topped by the Appalachian Mountains. Inland, there is an unending expanse of cold sand and cracked rock. The North American desert is as bitterly cold as the Gobi Desert was in East Asia. It stretches for about 2,400 kilometers until it finally fetches up against the rocky barrier formed by the glacier-ridden Rocky Mountains away to the west. All year long, piercing winds moving 100 kilometers an hour sweep southwards from the ice, stirring up vicious sandstorms and scouring away any potentially productive pockets of soil. Occasionally, winds howl in from the coastal regions, but very little rain reaches the interior. What precipitation there is tends to be snow, but even this falls infrequently. Any snow cover on higher ground is thin and patchy. There is a significant difference in temperature between the equator and the edge of the ice cap, producing a steep temperature gradient from north to south. This leads to unstable conditions with screaming tornadoes ripping across the interior far more frequently than they did during previous times. Vegetation is sparse in this harsh, arid landscape. Only the hardiest of plants exist, but in small numbers, Indeed, very little life can survive above ground. Those animals able to live in this bleak desert must withstand freezing temperatures and protect themselves from the violent storms. The animal inhabitants of the North American desert are supreme specialists, brilliantly adapted to cope with the specific demands of an uncompromising habitat. Some species have adapted physically, whilst others have altered their living environment. Animals that live here need to. Last out times when food is in short supply in order to do so they have developed remarkable strategies for storing energy and conserving food some animals have even developed altruistic feeding habits sharing food with other colony members to ensure the survival of the species as a whole. Death gleaners can be seen hanging in the air, resting on updrafts of wind blown off the sandy ridges below. They circle like vultures, seeking an easy meal on the ground. Now and again, one wheels and banks, signaling to the others that it has found something. Soon, a large group will gather and prepare to feast. The death gleaner is a species of giant, social, diurnal bat native to the North American desert and rocky mountains of 5 million AD. With a wingspan of about 1.3 meters and a body weight of roughly 600 grams, it is the largest known carnivorous bat in history, and of all bats, only some frugivorous human-era megabats were larger. Its mouth alone is about 3 centimeters long, and its teeth are an eighth of an 3 millimeters long. As the cold desert spread across North America, the death gleaner's forest-dwelling ancestor evolved to become larger and more social in order to cover more ground in its search for prey. As the bitterly cold conditions of the 5 million AD ice age spread across North America, bats were able to occupy the niches left over by niches left over by numerous species of hawks and vultures, which had experienced huge declines in biodiversity. The death gleaner has become diurnal in order to avoid the freezing temperatures of the desert night. In terms of overall appearance and wing structure the death gleaner hasn't evolved much from its forest-dwelling ancestors. The death gleaner is much larger than most extant bats, Though compared to most present bats the death gleaner is relatively skinny. Death gleaners will avoid excessive heat loss by cooling the blood before it passes through the systematic veins. Any heat taken from the blood entering the wing membrane is used to warm the blood returning from the wings. Another factor which allows bats to survive was being able to go into torpor, an involuntary state of physical and mental activity similar to hibernation. These efficient strategies for regulating body temperature, alone, have allowed bats to survive and thrive in an environment, whilst numerous species of mammals and birds have gone extinct. The death gleaner has become diurnal in order to avoid the freezing temperatures of the desert night. At nightfall death gleaners will return. End to their roosts, huddling together in large groups to conserve heat. Any leftover scraps from attacks are returned and shared with uneaten members of the bat colony. Sharing food not only aids the survival of certain individuals but of the entire species. 
An important prey item for the death gleaner is the spink, a subterranean flightless bird which lives in underground colonies. As spinks are usually inaccessible to death gleaners in their burrows, the bats have two main hunting strategies. The first is to follow a North American rattleback or look out for one digging, as rattlebacks frequently dig up desert turnips from spink burrows, scattering the birds on the surface and exposing them to death gleaners. Alternatively, recently matured spinks gather on the desert surface during the night to mate, so death gleaners which hunt in the early hours of dawn may find some stragglers still exposed. Although death gleaners may hunt lost baby rattlebacks, their armor is tough and unpalatable, and the bats will not attack a large adult. Rattlebacks can make themselves seem larger and more frightening by shaking their scales, the sharp edges of which could easily tear a death gleaner's delicate wings. South American rattlebacks were highly successful on the Dri grasslands that were spreading across the Amazon basin. So much so, in fact, that they were able to migrate northwards into the North American desert. There, the rattleback evolved into yet another species, one adapted for the cold desert environment. The North American rattleback or desert rattleback is a species of rattleback, an armored rodent, native to the North American desert of 5 million AD. It is a descendant of the South American rattleback. The South American rattleback managed to expand its range with several individuals crossing the Amazon basin, before migrating towards North America. As desert conditions are much different from roaming through an open savanna, the rattleback has undergone numerous physical alterations in order to withstand the harsh desert conditions of the American Midwest. The desert rattleback is less heavily built than its grassland cousin, provided the absence of large predators, compact, closely linked. Scales provide the perfect defense against sandstorms while the addition of thick hair shields the rattleback's face. The North American rattleback's ears and lips are less visible, as increased exposure to cold air can potentially lead to frostbite. Desert rattlebacks will provide both care and protection toward their young and must cover larger distances in search of food sources. Being an intelligent animal, the rattleback relies on its sense of smell to locate and unearth desert turnips, the rattleback's preferred source of water. Desert rattlebacks must cover large distances to locate desert turnips, as in the desert very little if any water is located. While digging for turnips, the rattleback may accidentally expose a burrowing spink. While the rattlebacks tolerate the spinks, unearthed the unfortunate animals are left vulnerable to predation to predators such as the death gleaner. With the end of the ice age, the world warms up and many of the animals that had adapted to the bitterly cold conditions of the ice age are unable to keep up with these rapid changes to their habitat and climate. The sphinx wings have evolved into strong, spade-like forelimbs for digging tunnels deep below the desert. Thespinkus a species of eusocial flightless subterranean galliform bird, about 8 cm long, endemic to the North American desert. The spink is descended from a species of quail, which are already ground-dwelling in the human era. The spink lost its ability to fly and became smaller and sleeker in order to become a burrowing animal, allowing it to survive in the harsh environment of the North American desert. Its wings have adapted into shovel-like appendages with hardened feathers. The spink's body plan is very different to that of a regular bird, as they are entirely quadrupedal, moving with a crawling, shuffling gait. The feathers of each wing have become horny scales better suited for digging, and the wings themselves are capable of independent movement in order to shovel earth. The spink crawls in much the same way as it digs, levering itself forward with its elbows, its weight supported by horny pads at the joints. The spink's beak, which can also be used for digging, is heavily flattened and is surrounded by a fringe of sensitive hairs which allow the nearly blind spink to better detect its immediate surroundings. Their feathers range in color from dark brownish gray to white, and they are patterned with dark, sometimes black, stripes and patches along their sides and faces. Like most birds, they appear to be sexually dimorphic, with males having brighter white bodies and darker, more defined markings as well as an extra stripe on the throat. Sphinx, despite being drastically different from their ancestors, have similar breeding habits. Like other galliform birds, it has a lek breeding system located in a single area. The males sing and try to gather the attention of females. The lek eventually ends when the sun comes up and they get back to work, digging and finding food as usual. Spinks principally feed on the sugar-rich sap of desert turnips, which is also the favored food item of the North American rattleback. 
Spink burrow systems are based around areas where this turnip is abundant, but their tunnels are frequently dug out or otherwise disturbed by rattlebacks searching for turnips, which they sometimes find by seeing spinks kicking sand out of their burrows. Spinks are preyed on by death gleaners, giant bats, which find them by following rattlebacks and waiting for them to disturb the spinks and scare them out onto the surface, or by hunting on the spinks' mating grounds at first light. With the end of the Ice Age, the world warms up and many of the animals that had adapted to the bitterly cold conditions of the Ice Age are unable to keep up with these rapid changes to their habitat and climate. The fauna of the desert's North American rattlebacks, spinks, and death gleaners go extinct. 